Jeffrey Nice is a human rights barrister who led the prosecution of former Serbian leader Slobodan Milosevic at the UN's International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. He joins us live now from Canterbury in the United Kingdom. Good to have you with us. So, looking through the statements we heard from councils to South Africa, there were references to additional measures, there were references to Israel failing to abide by previous provisional orders. What exactly, if you could summarize for us, is South Africa then asking the court to do now? One of your earlier contributors uh, made the point that occurred to me. To begin with, South Africa allowed for those who might have doubts about Israel's intention not to be too horrified by the order that was eventually obtained. And that order did not order the cessation of fighting. It ordered protection of the Gaza people in respect of their right not to suffer genocide. But you will have noticed that this time, the language is much, much stronger. Not only in that it demands an end immediately and withdrawal of fighting forces, but it, it asserts quite clearly that there is genocidal intent on the part of Israel, the desire to see off Gazan citizens altogether. And by having waited some time before it puts this argument at the top of its case, it has shown respect to the court and to some degree extent respect even to Israel, given what Israel undoubtedly suffered on the 7th of October. But now it is making it quite clear that which many other commentators have felt has been the case, namely that there's evidence that Israel really has genocidal intent to destroy the Gazan people in Gaza altogether. It's a big change. Now, it, it's a big it change. So, seem, Jeffrey, if I could jump in, it is basically does this mean that if the ICJ rules in favor of South Africa's pleading at this point, that it would be basically agreeing that there is genocidal intent and it would be ordering an end to the entire war in Gaza. Is that right? It won't do the first thing because it can't make a determination of genocide really until all the evidence is heard at the end of the overall case. But what it may do is identify a far stronger risk of genocide against which it needs to give its protection. And it may say the only way it can give its protection is by granting the protective measures that South Africa repeats and asks for. And what's interesting, of course, is that as things develop over time, desperately sad that it has to happen that way, tragic that it has to happen that way, where lives are lost in the intervening period, but if it does that, then it's actually to some extent in step with the changing political approach, not least by the United States of America, but also other countries who are saying that the attack on Rafa should not go ahead, saying that arms should not be used for the attack on Rafa, and so on and so forth. That's, and it was that's, an important, that. that's an important point. I want to jump in again, though, and get in on something you mentioned. If if the court cannot make that finding of genocidal intent, obviously, or one assumes that it's got to wait for the major case to be finalized, the main case to be finalized, what was the value of South Africa introducing that in its pleading today? Is it to build up the grounds slowly towards that finding of genocidal intent? I think it's both that, of course, but it's also to establish evidence in the words of those who it says has spoken with genocidal intent to justify the protective measures, to say, as a result of what you've heard, seen and observed on the footage or pictures, you can now be sure that the risk of the Gazan people suffering genocide is really great and therefore you must do more and what you must do is this. I thought there was also a very interesting element from one of the speaker, uh, one of the council. I can't remember which one, 
who spoke of the desire of some countries to have things resolved politically in the Security Council rather than by law. That approach is one that I think the general public who are informed about these matters would find deeply concerning and distasteful. It is politicians for decades in the Security Council and around the world who bear responsibility for what has happened here. What has happened here was foreseeable from the beginning of the 20th century when the first developments towards the creation of the State of Israel were taking place. Everybody knew how things might end and it needed real clever international political goodwill and action to save what has happened from happening. So the idea that this law which was introduced, the Genocide Convention, to save people from the sort of thing that it is said is now happening should be overridden by the works of politicians when it is they who bear responsibility for what is happening is a pretty tall order, isn't it? And I think the public now, who are becoming increasingly well aware of the law and how it interacts with countries that choose to go to war, I think the public will now begin to see that they would rather the law worked than that the politicians did not work. I think there's uh, plenty of sentiment around the world that will probably agree with uh, the idea that there's doubt in politicians, certainly. Ultimately, Jeffrey, do you think it's likely this court is going to grant South Africa's request? Will it order an end to the war? I prefer not to second guess what the court decides, but I'm not the judge, they are. But I think it's worth having in mind as we wait for their decision that if they don't grant the request, then it will be seen by Israel as a green light to do that which many countries around the world want them not to do. So to the extent that the International Court of Justice is politically sensitive, and of course it is, all international courts are particularly sensitive, and sometimes subject to political influence, to the extent that it's politically sensitive, it may be rather easier for it to do that which South Africa wants now than it would have been five months ago. All right. Thank you so much for your analysis of these proceedings, oral statements being made today. Jeffrey Nice there. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.